Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Robertson and welcome to the first tutorial video for the All Went South Custom Oil Rig Base where I'll be showing you how to both drill down to find the oil under the rig and how to use the refinery to turn it into diesel and jet fuel. As you've probably seen, this platform was recently evacuated by my colleagues in the Stormworks Rescue Service after a pair of YouTubers with a tendency to mess around and cater to a, how should I put it, younger demographic, ended up endangering the lives of the oil workers that were based here. Unfortunately, those two clowns sadly died before they could record themselves touring and reviewing this facility. But, as luck would have it, things seem to have quietened down again since their untimely demise, to the extent where I myself am allowed back on board so I can at least show people how to get everything working. This is actually planned to be the first of two tutorial videos. This one focuses on the drilling and refining operations, whilst the other one will be a brief lesson on how to launch and retrieve one of the LB600 Freefall lifeboats. Anyway, before I get started, the first thing I need to do is lock this rib onto the deck and make sure that it's secure. Then I'll make my way up to the control panel that's located in the office at the very top of the accommodation module. Yep, that looks fine. Okay, let's get some lights on and take a seat in the drilling operator's chair. One of the first things you'll want to do is get this camera on and zoom it in on the drilling derrick, especially where the rods go in and connect to each other. As you can see, I've also added a few more cameras that you can switch between, one looking down at the wellhead and another that's attached to it looking down at the ocean floor. As expected, all of these can be toggled to use infrared if required. That should do. All we really need that for is just to see any rods that we bring over there have aligned themselves correctly. To actually begin the process, we'll need to use the WASD keys to move the drill rod connector down and to the left, and left click so that the light turns green. This will let us grab one of the drilling rods and lift it back up again. There, that yellow light and noise you just heard means it's grabbed one of the rods. Now I need to move it up first, as far as it'll go and then move it over to the right, once again, as far as it'll go, just to make sure that it doesn't flail around and hit anything whilst I'm bringing it over. Those two wedges above the drill rod connector and drill table will eventually let the drill rod slide into position above the hole there. Once it looks like it's aligned correctly, all you need to do is lower it using the S key and it should just slide right in. There, that's the first one done. It should be safe now to left click to unlock it and then repeat our previous step to load another rod. From now on things will be a little different as not only are we loading one rod onto another which means that once the ends of the rods meet inside that mechanism in the middle some lights will turn green and they will automatically connect. Just keep pressing the S key and once both ends disappear beneath it you can safely left click and the pump jack will grab the rod instead and keep a hold of it which is a little safer. The other change is that those cables that hold the wellhead in place are going to begin to get taut as the rods push down on them, which means that we're going to reach the point where we will have to slowly press the 1 key in order to use the winches to lower the wellhead along with pressing the S key to lower the rods as well. Yeah, I know it sounds a little complicated to begin with, but trust me, you'll get the hang of it. If anything, this is where it begins to get boring, as you'll essentially be repeating those last two steps over and over again, adding rods and lowering both them and the wellhead until you get close to the seabed. So, rather than subject you to all that, I'm going to record this next part as a time lapse, and I'll only come back once we get close to the ocean floor or if something interesting happens. Until then, enjoy!
are now, as some of you may have spotted, I'm down to my last drill rod. And as you may have guessed, those are quite important as we need them to drill through the seabed and into the oil deposit underneath. But fear not, I have more. All I need to do to access them is hit this button here, and there you are. The rod rack flips over, presenting us with a fresh row of drill rods. You can even press the same button to rotate it back again. Not only does this save space, but it makes it slightly easier to add replacement rods to the rack later on, should you ever come across a particularly deep well. Anyway, I thought I'd just pause to show you guys that, but it's time for me to get back to work. But hey, there's not much further to go now. One thing to bear in mind is how much further the oil deposit is under the seabed seems to be random and is dependent on the seed of the game world. But the one under the rig base always seems to be pretty close to the surface, at least from what I've seen. In fact, one more rod should probably do it. In that case, it might be worth turning the drill table on now, that way it can start boring into the rock as soon as we hit the seabed. And the useful thing is, you can tell when it's switched on via that orange coloured indicator up there. Almost there. There we go. That blue indicator tells us that the wellhead is anchored. And if we switch to the wellhead camera, you can even see some metal columns coming out from under it. What I'll do now is go into ghost or no clip mode and let you guys have a better look at it. There it is, our wellhead that's now safely anchored onto the seabed. Which now means that we're also ready to begin drilling down into the rock below. In fact, because the drill table is already on, we can start this simply by left-clicking and connecting the pump jack to the rod itself. And there she blows! Yeah, that was quick, but again, I've only ever seen this with the rig bay so far. All the others require you to drill quite far into the rock first. Anyway, let's switch that alarm off, shall we? That's better. It's still drilling down at the moment, and if you want, you can just turn the drill table off now and leave it as it is. And even if you don't, it's fine. It'll just keep drilling all the way down until it reaches the connector and it just won't go any further. And because we're already through to the oil deposit, and as you can see from that gauge, we're already getting crude oil into that large oil storage tank now. But what I like to do, however, just to keep everything tidy and to stop things from moving or shaking around, is to use one more rod to drill with and then lock it in place using the connectors on the drilling derrick. It's also worth noting not to touch any of those controls on the far right from this point onwards either, otherwise it'll unlock the wellhead and you'll lose your drilling progress. Not a huge loss in this instance, but I could see that being a painful mistake on a different seed with a deeper oil deposit. Hence why the button is locked and needs a key to open. Anyway, rather than force you all to wait, I'm going to skip time to when I've loaded one more rod and then I'll show you how to lock the drill assembly. Right, now that I've loaded another rod, I'm going to make sure that it drills just past that first set of connectors that I can see at the top of the drilling derrick, then I'm going to move it back up slightly and lock it in place. The reason why I'm doing it that way is to try and prevent anything being damaged by the whole assembly and its rod trying to snap downwards into the connectors instead. This might not be too much of an issue right now, but back when the wellhead is moving freely, you can actually damage it quite badly by doing that. So as you can imagine, I just prefer to err on the side of caution. There we go, the drill assembly has been locked in place and we're still getting a good flow of oil in from the well. Again, this is just something that I use to keep the pump jack in place and to stop it from being knocked around and taking the rod with it. Well, now that we're done with the drilling, let's make a start at using the refinery. And don't worry dear viewers, it's not as complicated as it looks. The first thing we need to do is turn these fuel pumps on. Confirmation of this is shown by those arrows lighting up on the control panel. What this will do is take anything that's been refined out of the distillation tower and into their respective fuel tanks. 
Now we need to increase the flow rate of oil out of the main tank and into the distillation tower. There's a rough guide posted just above it if you're stuck, but as a general rule of thumb, I find about 0.53 to be the sweet spot once everything gets going. Next, we start the diesel furnace, which is the primary one. There is an electric furnace too, but it's really only meant to help boost the temperature if you're having trouble or to refine the necessary fuel in an emergency, most likely because you didn't have any to begin with. Providing you've not been careless and flooded the distillation tower with oil, the temperature will gradually increase until it reaches 300 degrees Celsius, at which point you'll be notified by a yellow indicator on the control panel. That's right, the one that's just come on, and the oil will now separate into both diesel and jet fuel, after which the pumps will send them to their respective fuel tanks, ready to be used in your own vehicles or transported elsewhere and sold on. Now, bear in mind that this may take a few seconds to register on those gauges, but rest assured, it is happening. What you will notice is that as the temperature increases, the amount of oil being consumed by the distillation tower in the refinery will begin to match and probably even exceed what is going in. So feel free to adjust the flow rate so that it becomes as stable as possible. Remember, it is always better to have slightly more going out of the refinery than coming in, especially if you plan on going away for any length of time. Yeah, that looks perfect, even the jet fuel's coming through now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that pretty much covers it with regards to both the drilling and refining operations here at the Owent South Custom Rig Base. But if at any point you got confused, then please feel free to go back and re-watch one of the earlier parts of this video, or even post a question in the comment section in either the Steam Workshop or my YouTube channel. And don't forget to stay tuned, as I've got another tutorial video coming out shortly after this one, where I'll be showing everyone how to both launch and recover one of those LB600 freefall lifeboats that we have at this oil rig, as the original version of that particular creation could only be launched, and that was it. And for those of you that are here wanting to know what's happened to my Space Engineers content, don't worry guys, I've recorded about 20 minutes of the next episode already, and should hopefully have the rest of it done within the next month or two. Free time depending, of course. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's tutorial video. I hope you found it both informative and enjoyable. I would like to end by thanking you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Until then, this is Robertson, signing off.